Look at that. Oh, I can manage. Is your hip giving you grief today? Always gives me grief. And I managed for the last ten years, so you're a little late for the knight in shining armor routine. Suit yourself the money trying to help. God damn it, Stephen. I'm not some useless, sappy girl that you can just string along forever. Look around you. I made all of this. I built it on my own when everyone else had written me off as some poor little cripple. You know that's not how I see you. Well, you weren't there, were you? No. You'd given up on me long before the accident. What do you want from me, Lizzie? I love you. I'll do anything. Anything except okay? I thought not. I love you too, but sometimes I think you just say what you think everyone else wants to hear. I found another dead bird over at the swimming pool. That's the fourth one this morning. Did you fish it out? Yeah. Did you get a chance to think about that pay rise? Oh, I'm sorry, Reese. I've been a little bit busy. Oh, Rachel. Sorry I'm late, Mrs. Graves. I was packing away the tennis thing. Did you check Mr. Cole Shelley again like I asked you to? He's not back yet. I haven't seen him either. Do you think he went into town? Maybe. Yeah, something Only like that. Only the dentists were booked in for a 4.30 tennis session, but they didn't show up. So I went to their chalet. You know, they always take the one near the campfire, but they weren't there either. I think maybe they went into the village for a hoover bag and might have given Mr. Cole a lift. A hoover bag? Why on earth would they do that? Well, I think maybe Mrs. Denton was hoovering and the bag broke, so they had to get another one. Because there's this dust all over their chalet.
This is a public service announcement from Hamilton District Council Emergency Measures Committee. Road and rail closures are being implemented to help contain the outbreak of influenza. Please remain calm and indoors. Local community leaders, head teachers, scoutmasters, and members of the clergy will act as your representatives during this period. Be sure to report any symptoms of illness. Friend? It's Kate. Elizabeth? Lizzie. I've heard a lot about you. It's good, you know, you and Emma, it's not difficult or anything. Should it be? I'm sorry? You said it wasn't difficult. I don't see why it would be difficult. You and Stephen were together a long time ago. He moved away. It certainly isn't difficult for me. I I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you or... No, I'm not offended. Listen, Elizabeth... But I... Lizzie... Please. <laughs> Lizzie. Right. You seem like an okay type of person. And I'm not trying to be rude, I promise. But let's try and be realistic here, huh? Let's, um, try and do our best. It's a British thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I suppose it is. We'll do our best, then.
This is a public service announcement from Hamilton District Council Emergency Measures Committee. Road and rail closures are being implemented to help contain the outbreak of influenza. Please remain calm and indoors. Local community leaders, head teachers, scoutmasters, and members of the clergy will act as your representatives during this period. But be sure to report any symptoms of illness. She's done a runner. Don't say that, Reese. She wouldn't do that. Would she? What about Dylan? She's not exactly jumped at the chance of looking after him, has she? She just left you to it. She's not coming back. They let her go. She's always thinking of everyone else. There must be something important she needs to do. It looks like you're in charge now. So I guess this means we're not leaving, are we? Spain can wait. Listen. You get back in there, and you make this the best bloody Peter Pan ever performed in England. And I'm going to go and get your mum and dad. Promise me you'll come back. I promise.
This is a public service announcement from Haberton District Council Emergency Measures Committee. Road and rail closures are being implemented to help contain the outbreak of influenza. Please remain calm and indoors. Local community leaders, head teachers, scoutmasters, and members of the clergy will act as your representatives during this period. Be sure to report any symptoms of illness. either. Well, they live nearby, don't they? Yeah, in the village. You don't think she's gone to look for Mr. Graves, do you? I think Lizzie knows Robert will turn up when he's sober. He'll be all right. Do you want me to go and look for him? No, it's okay. Come on, I promised the kids another shot the last number, then I promised everyone a cup of tea. You're very like her, you know. Like Lizzie. Me? No, I'm not. First chance I get, I'm out of here. Five towers are now operating together, and I've got the reception up to the red zone, but it's not enough. I'm going to try and route the signal through Tower 6 to create a singular point of reception and re-coordinate the optical array, which should, in theory, focus a signal spike on the point of origin. If I conceptualize this origin point as a seventh tower, then it makes a kind of sense. Kind of. I think we're moving so far beyond everything I understand about physics. Anyway, it's got to be worth a shot. This is Graves. Sean, is baby Dylan, is he all right? He's fine. Dai, come on. It's okay. Let's get you a cup of tea. <sighs> Mrs. Graves, I need to tell you. Leave it. Dai. If you try and get out of the valley, all the roads are shut there. I know. I was driving really fast, but the other car was on the wrong side of the road, and I can't think Dai, for fuck's sake, leave it. It's all right. Hey, you're all right. 
Sean's all right. Baby Dylan's all right. That is what matters. Everyone's all right. <laughs> but no. Now, I need your help. Some of the children, they're getting quite frightened. So Rachel and I, we decided to push forward the show, keep them occupied. You said the other night you play piano. Can you help with that? Yes, yes, I suppose so. But Mr Graves, Rob... Can look after himself. He's a big boy now. Don't worry. Just head to the hall and find Rachel. She'll tell you what needs practising. OK, thank you, Mrs Graves. Thank and Sean, you. go and find Reese, please, see if he needs some help. Yeah, of course. Go on. Oh, Robert. saw you. Mrs. Graves? I can hardly look her in the eyes. Are you sure we've got enough money? Yeah. Once we're in France, we can start working anyway. My dad will bloody skin you. We'll be in Spain and married by the time your dad knows we've gone. Road and Railroad 
measures are being implemented to help contain the outbreak of influenza. Please remain calm and indoors. Local community leaders, head teachers, scoutmasters, and members of the clergy will act as your representatives during this period. Be sure to report any symptoms of illness.
You shouldn't be smoking, you know. Not in your condition. <laughs> Stephen's fault. He got me started again. I'm not going to try and stop you, but the weather's looking pretty rough. There's a storm coming. That's what Stephen said. He said he'll meet me, but there's things he has to do first. He seems to think that all of this is connected to him. I don't know. I I'm going anyway, whether he comes or not. I'm assuming Stephen has thought of a way through the quarantine. Well, he's clever. you got to give him that. Do you trust him, though? Well, I love him. So I'd hope that was good enough. I hope so, too. Listen, if you can't get through, for whatever reason, I'm uh, getting people together at the village hall, rounding up stragglers, that sort of thing. Yeah, I've got all the campers together here, doing a show. Peter Pan. The kids love it. It'll take their minds off things. Hey, did you see that?
It's quite something, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You ever seen anything like it? They must be well happy at the observatory place. They're probably all partying there right now. This is right, Boston. <laughs> it is. Right. That's me. Short leash. Kids up half the night, bloody teething. Mrs. will kill me if I'm gone too long. <laughs> Good night, Ned. Night. to leave the observatory but couldn't I stood at the gates but couldn't conceive of a world outside the strangest feeling as if the valley Stephen everything was simply irrelevant an idea of something not of something itself I'm losing track of time of whether I'm asleep or awake my fingers have gone numb at the tips it's like they still feel, but what they feel is no longer for me. Like the signal has been hijacked. We're not even really talking at the moment, if I'm honest with you. I've been sleeping it in one of the empty chalets. Otherwise, we just sit there in silence. And then he goes off and pretends he's not drinking from one of his secret little stashes. And I pretend I ain't noticed. And then when we go to bed, it's all I can do not to scream. I don't know why we're still together. Except I do. I still love him. You remind me of Mary when she was your age. If we'd had a daughter, I'd have been proud if she turned out like you. You don't have to say that. Just talk to Robert. Tell him you know he's drinking again. You two can work it out together. I know you can. I wish I had your faith. I just don't want to be the person who stayed because they were afraid to move. I know you can't dwell on the past. I know that, but sometimes you do just think, don't you? What if the accident happened? I could have been anywhere right now, rather than stuck here, rehearsing Peter Bloody Pan and fixing tumble dryers for the umpteenth. Frank, you are an angel. Don't be that. You're still young, Lizzie. You've got plenty of time to be whoever you want to be. Just don't keep using that leg of yours, or that husband, as an excuse. This is a public service announcement from Haverton District Council Emergency Measures Committee. Road and rail closures are being implemented to help contain the outbreak of influenza. Please remain calm and indoors. Local community leaders, head teachers, scoutmasters, and members of the clergy will act as your representatives during this period. Be sure to report any symptoms of illness.
Boy, Shipley, I want a word with you. What? Get over here, soft lad, and keep your voice down. Do you know who I am? Yeah? You work for Meg Holloway? Charlie Tate. You can call me Charlie. What's this about, Charlie? Rachel Baker. What about her? Oh, come on, son. I wasn't born yesterday. Are you looking to get your head kicked in? She's 16. She's not a kid. You try telling her dad that. He'll bloody kill you. I love her, though. You can't stop love. I'm not telling you to stop anything. Just be careful, that's all. Sunburn, but it's a funny shape. Is it sore? I can't feel it at all. Don't fuss over it. I can't believe that you left Kate there. Why won't you tell me what happened? She's probably not even noticed I've gone. Ah. Uh, it's really nothing. You're lying. Don't lie to me. Fine. We had a row. She'll work all night anyway. Stephen, listen to me. Was there an accident? Is that how your face got burnt? It's nothing. Something, I don't know. Just got a bit shaken up and then we fought. She wanted to stay and collect more data. Was she burnt as well? Is everything all right? Jesus, Liz, are you sleeping with me or her? She's fine, we're both fine. I don't want to talk about her. I came here to see you. I just worry... Well, you... don't. Come to bed. was that he treated me like I was too stupid to notice. I dream through the light storm and see the pattern dancing on his skin as he burns. I wake up with eyes full of liquid light. I'm going to concentrate all five remaining towers on the same point in the sky. If it is establishing conduits for communication, that should create a jump in bandwidth.
Hey, it's just been on the radio that they're closing the roads. Something about the flu? D no one here has flu, Sean. There's no flu here. I overheard Mrs Graves and she said another family of Epton left. She said they must have left last night, but the car and all their stuff's still here. Screw this, day. There's 15 people up there left in two days. I don't like it. Where's the baby? Asleep in the caravan. Sean, I don't want to sit around you waiting for it to get worse. I reckon if we leave now, we can get out to the valley before they get their acts together and close the roads. You think so? Yeah, we can go the back roads. Through the woods. I'll leave some money on the side for Mrs Graves. You know her husband isn't back here either. He's a boozer, right? That's what I've heard. That's a problem anyway. Don't be unkind, Sean. Come on, let's go and get there then. I think it was instant. I, I know that's no help. Can you leave me alone? There was nothing we could do. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Ben. Oh, you've woken the baby. Just leave me alone. Rachel, I'm sorry. Sorry. Found it like this? Yeah. I got into the habit of checking in first thing in the morning just to make sure he's had his pills. Mr. Coles is not a well man, Elizabeth. It's entirely possible he upped and wandered off. If things progressed, the mind can be a fragile thing, you know? It's just not very like him, that's all I'm saying, Doctor. He never misses the mid-morning bingo. He didn't smoke, did he? Not that I knew of. It's a funny... It's like ash. Well, that, that is odd. Reese cleaned in here yesterday afternoon. I'll have to have a word. It's not like cigarette ash. Strange. Dr. Wade has just been a phone call. We need him back at the village. Apparently, Mrs. Barton has disappeared.
this is Kate Collins and Stephen Appleton. Leave a message. Stephen, it's me. I'm leaving. I've waited as long as I can. If you are there to meet me, I'm leaving for the station now, but I am going anyway, whether you're there or not. But I love you. Please be there. I love you. This is a public service announcement from Hamilton District Council Emergency Measures Committee. Road and rail closures are being implemented to help contain the outbreak of influenza. Please remain calm and indoors. Local community leaders, head teachers, scoutmasters, and members of the clergy will act as your representatives during this period. Be sure to report any symptoms of illness. to go and went out for a cigarette and then Dick come back and then Di, she went out after him and she didn't come back uh, either. Where is Dylan? Was he with Sean and Di? No, I'd be looking after him. Do you think they'll come back? I, I don't know, Rachel. I don't care what anyone thinks. I just know if he was my baby I could never leave him. Even if the whole world was coming to an end, I'd make sure he came first. You'd be a good mum, Rachel. Oh, don't worry. It's fine. Go, go back inside and tell everyone that they're doing a great job. A really wonderful job. I just got a few things to finish up here, and then I'll come in and join you. Right. Go on. faster than I can encode it. I've already lost two processors. They keep burning out. Please, I love you. You need to get out of there. It's not safe. I need you, Stephen. I need you here. I can open the gate manually. I can let you in. It's too dangerous. You don't understand what's happening. No, here. you don't understand. We can solve this. We can find a way. I just need more power. I need to amplify the signal, and I can't do it on my own. You saw the opportunity. You ran the numbers, remember? We're responsible for all this. You and me. It's not just you and me anymore, though, is it? Jesus, Kate, you're trying to talk to it, aren't you? Kate, you can't. Stephen, I have to.
It's completely dead. It won't start. It's only a short walk to the camp. I think we should split up. You go and fetch Rachel. I'll go back to the village and find Evie. I don't think we should split up. I don't want to either, Charlie, but we've got to. I'll meet you back at my house later on. We can talk properly. Then. Why won't you tell me what happened? No, no, actually, you should stay at the camp tonight. Come and find me in the morning. Bring Rachel back. She's going to need her mother. Meg. Just take care of her. Meg! What is it, Charlie? Nothing. Just be careful, that's all. I will, I promise. You as well. I'll see you later on. Why on earth are you there? Why aren't you calling from home? It's hard to explain. I'm having to move around to follow it. When it finds a suitable host, it begins to amplify... Sorry, I'm not making much sense. They're talking about flu and a quarantine on the radio, but this... I know you're not that kind of doctor, but it all just sounds really weird. We don't know exactly what it is yet, but it's got something to do with the other night. Stephen, your face, the mark, do you think you're infected? It's not a disease, Lizzie. It's something else. There's something Kate said about patterns. I can't grasp it clearly yet. Okay, come over. Have some lunch. We can talk properly. Have you spoken with Kate? Oh, she's locked herself in the observatory. She's buried in the data. But it's already out here in the world. I need to see how it adapts. How what adapts? Stephen, try to explain. Lizzie, listen. Be ready. I need to go. It's moving again. I'll call you later.
you think she'll like it? It's in an awful state, Stephen. I don't It'll think so. It'll be an adventure. It'll mean putting down roots here, maybe a family. Are you sure she wants children? What, to stay here? It's not her place, you know. Don't start that again, please. I mean, she's ambitious, love, and she's, well, older. She's not going to want to stay cooped up at home looking after the kids. Is that how you felt about me? Oh, stop it, Stephen. That's not what I meant, and you know it. I'm just saying you should make a choice. If it's a family you want, well, you know how much Lizzie wants a family. Jesus, Mum, I didn't come here for marriage guidance. I just asked what you thought about a fucking house. Stephen Appleton language. Sorry, it's just that you have to understand. Kate is the most brilliant, extraordinary, wonderful person I've ever known. She's, she's like no one else. The way she looks at things. It's like she has whole worlds inside her head. I don't think you or anyone really understands that. Physical changes are evident. Although the butterfly burn is now faded, I can clearly see the change in my pores up close. As I record these words, I can feel myself hearing them as if for the first time, as if I'm both speaker and listener simultaneously. I am a scientist. I can only deal with the evidence I have. And this points in one simple direction. It's not in the observatory.
Jones, you know the protocol. That doesn't matter now. It's figured out how to circumvent the telecommunications blackout. What? I didn't think it could. Kate understood. She saw how adaptable it was. How smart. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're talking about it like it's alive. You have to assume that everyone here is infected. We can't know We're that. We're infected. It's killed all the birds, and now it's in us. It's trying to leave the valley any way it can. The quarantine is not enough. You've got to remove the carriers. You've got to cut off its energy source, its food. I've already told you, Stephen, I'm not going to water you an have airstrike. To. Now it knows we're onto it. It's going to keep on spreading as fast as it can. The quarantine and blackout will hold it in check. They've cut all of the phones out of the valley, so it's only you communicating well, out you're now. You're listening. It's figured out ways around it. Radio waves, something. All of the lines are cut, but the phones are working anyway. You've done all the right things, but it's not enough. You've got to stop it before it adapts again. Stephen, my my family, my, my wife and kids... You know perfectly well what you've got to do. I can't do it. Don't ask me to do it. You're asking me to sign their death warrant, my own family. Damn it, don't you think I'm aware of that? I'll still be here when you drop the fucking stuff. Don't you lecture me about sacrifice, you spineless little shit. If you're so full of ideas, you come here and try dealing with it. Tell them the time when we had a choice is over. Tell them to do it. You've got to do it now.
<laughs> you look well. I don't. But thank you. You do. How are you settling in? Nothing changes around here. I mean, it's great to be back. It still feels like home, I suppose. In a funny kind of way. It's been a long time, Stephen. Last time you saw me, I could still walk properly. You look pretty good to me. Stop it. For what it's worth, I'm sorry about how things worked out. Or didn't. Or didn't, right. Do you think you made a mistake leaving? My mum tells me it's never too late to change things, to put things right. Funny. It's just what she said to me the other day. I have been wondering oh, what she meant God, by that. That's embarrassing. Sorry. Yeah, oh, maybe I should go. Why? Stephen, we're both married. I don't think this is a good idea. What isn't? We're just two old friends having a drink, that's all. all over the valley. Don't you get that? This isn't some abstract thing. Whatever came down into the tower has got out. They've quarantined the whole valley. It's right here in the observatory. It's out in the world. It's adapting and spreading. Do you understand? No, we can't turn it away. It's come too far. Okay, people are disappearing. Shut it down now. No. If you won't help me, I'll do it on my own. I'm gonna route all the power back through Tower 6. Kate, wait, wait. Oh, it's trying to break through again. Kate, wait.
mistake. What do you want me to say? You knew what you were getting into. Really? Well, I'm sorry we don't measure up to your exacting standards, Dr. Collins. Maybe you just need to give us ordinary humans a break. What? Ordinary humans like Lizzie Graves? Did you really think that I wouldn't find out? Frank told me. Or did you forget there's one person in this shithole who actually talks to me? Kate, it was just a dream. Don't bother, Stephen! Oh, for Christ's sake. Kate, slow down. You were engaged to her, Stephen. You nearly married oh, her. Oh, come on, it was just a drink. Then why the hell did you lie to me about because it? Because I knew you'd be mad and then it would end up in a row. You wanted to focus on the event tonight. Oh, so you were actually doing me a favor. Wow, I guess I just forgot to say thank you. Do not treat me like I'm an idiot. You're overreacting. I know, I know you're stressed. Just don't. You keep away from me, Edmund. I'm not going to let you ruin this for me. Kate. Kate, come on, this is crazy. Jesus, man, what do you done to your face? It's nothing. You collecting feed? Looks like the supplies haven't been coming in. Huh? Again? The phones are all strange. I can't pinpoint the logic for transmission. You what? What are you doing with that paint? Means the EMC are actually moving at the proper speed. Listen, Frank. Have you uh, heard anything on the radio about a flu outbreak? Doesn't seem much like flu to me. They're shutting down access to the valley to try and isolate it. No. There's something about the phones. I can't put my finger on it quite yet. What are you talking about? Hey, I'm still talking to you. Where are you going? This is Catherine Collins, recording for posterity. It's all over. I don't know how long I've got. Whatever he did, whatever the planes were carrying, it's burning my lungs. Probably some kind of nerve agent. I suspect it's only exposure to the pattern that has kept me alive this long. I'm making my way to Tower 6. I'm going to fuse the signals from the optical array. I just...
Have they closed the tunnel? There's no trains. I've put up a sign. The tunnel, Howard, is it closed? I think so. I don't like it. It's not right at all. It's not whiny. It doesn't help me. Repeating over and over to myself in the dark, eating cold food from a can with my fingers. My name is Catherine Collins. I am Catherine Collins. As if I can force the world to acknowledge my existence. Time has ceased to exist in any real terms. I'm reduced to marking out the days on the walls. Like a cave woman. Stephen, I don't know if you'll ever listen to this. Uh, maybe you've decided to stay with Kate, and I, I can't blame you for that. But I can't wait for you either. I've got to think about the baby. And, well, <laughs> I should have left a long time ago. I've run out of excuses for not leaving now. But I do love you, Stephen. And I hope you find peace one way or another. Oh, there's planes coming.
I've never seen it. They do, though. You're overreacting. Steven, they stare at me. <laughs> Yesterday, I went into the village, and this old woman just stopped in the middle of the street and stared at me like I had two heads. Oh, don't be so melodramatic. <laughs> I'm like a walking freak show. Oh, this place. It's so insular. I just don't understand how you grew up here. Well, I was very different then. And they're not so bad, really. That's easy for you to say. Just give it a bloody chance, Kate. This was the deal. A year here, and we could be in with a real shot at Lucia. Stephen! Oh, Christ, it's Lantham. Stephen Appleton, I thought it was you. What's all this about a young wife? Oh. Um, hello. Two heads, Stephen. Hi, I'm Kate. Speaking, Howard, it's Clive. Clive Smith. I need you to listen to me and not ask questions or interrupt. Can you do that? Yeah, I can. But why are you calling? The Emergency Measures Committee is imposing a quarantine around the valley. We've got an influenza outbreak in the village. We're suspending rail services, and we're also going to be shutting down the roads for a bit. Uh, you're going to be dealing with some anxious people, Howard, so you need to explain. It's all under control, and we'll be back to normal in a few days. All right? Open up the emergency store. There's posters and boards, along with a bunch of stuff that hasn't been used since the war. Grab anything you think might be useful. I need you to close up any unoccupied buildings, put posters up, that sort of thing. Make sure everything is all squared away in ship shape. You are a military man, I'm sure you understand that. Everyone doing their bit, following their orders. All right? All right? I think. Good man. I knew we could count on you. Ah, Jesus, please. What the hell was that?
You're a daft old bird walking all the way out here for it. You know Charlie would have dropped it off. What? And have that stinking great lorry of his poisoning my birds? He shouldn't be driving it on these lanes. It's a hazard. I think he was hoping he could have a word with you about Frank. There's nothing to say. Oh, listen, Wendy, they might all be scared of you, but that's not going to work with me. You're 68 years old. Grow up. Talk to Frank. How dare you speak to me like that? Give me my bird feeder right now. Promise me you'll drop by and see your brother. Megan Holloway, give Not a chance. Promise me. It's for your own good, and you know it. You are a shamelessly manipulative and difficult woman. It's no wonder Charlie adores you so much. No wonder I do what? No wonder you never finish what you start. I thought I told you to check the incoming stock orders. Wendy, one bird feeder for you. I'll tell Frank you'll stop by. Oh! Charlie, stop mooning around and stick the kettle on. Make yourself useful. Appleton! What are you doing here? You thieving bastard! I knew it was you! Listen, take everything you need. But then you have to leave. You don't understand. You can't be near me. Painting these stupid little pictures. Stealing food. You always were a little prick. Please, every second we're in proximity makes it worse. I'm a primary conduit. You're a fucking disgrace. Come here! Yeah, don't touch me! Get off! What's going on? Come in here! Lord. Get off! Over Sam. us! Thinking you're so much better Sam, than the rest no of us. No you and your stupid fucking missus. She's better than any of you. <laughs> Sam. Sam. <laughs> Meg, please. Don't, don't come near me. Meg. <laughs> Charlie. Meg. Meg, wait. Don't, don't touch I, me. Meg, please, you have to understand. It was an accident. Get off her. Let go. Let's just go. <sighs> Charlie. You have to understand, it was an accident. Just leave him. Leave him! What have you done, Appleton, you bastard? Come on, Charlie, let's Thanks, just get Charlie, out of here! Thanks, Charlie, please! Pressure in my eyes again. I can't move my legs, can't feel my face. When I collapsed, the light was waiting for me there. Caught me, lowered me here. Now it's pulling around my feet, watching me. 
The printers are spewing out page after page of zeros. It's frightening, too. It'll be okay. It'll be fine. I'll look after you. It's in there. It's scared. Oh, it's traveled so far. It's okay. I can help you. We can be together now. When I was a kid, my dad found a fox. It had been hit by a car and couldn't walk anymore. My mum went spare, of course. Made him keep it in the shed. He was already slipping away from us then. He spent hours with that fox, telling it all about Italy and the villages they bombed there. I was... I was jealous, I think. The fox got more of my dad than I did. But it was dying, that was clear. So one day, I snuck out, took it a sandwich for food. I was only eight. When it bit me, I remember the anger, the shock, the hurt. Running in, screaming from the garden, my mum panicking about rabies. My dad beat it to death with a spade. I found him crying. I'd done a Ken, son. That's what he said. I'd done a Ken, it was hurting you. That's just a poor, dumb, dying animal. It doesn't know it's hurting us. Christ help us, it's left the valley. It's everywhere now. It's been three hours since the planes went over. I haven't been able to reach anyone on the shortwave. I'm beginning to think I may have made a terrible miscalculation. Forever. Like before. 
You've taken everyone I've ever loved from me. You've made me do things I never even thought I was capable of. But if you think I'm coming with you... Kate? Wait. Stop. Kate. This is Catherine Collins. I don't know if anyone will ever hear this. It's all over. I'm the only one left. plane, Stephen leaned across me and pointed out the window. Down there, he said. That's home. But all I saw were patches of color. I don't think until this moment that I understood that one could contain the other so completely. I watched a butterfly dancing in a strip of sunlight. All of its life contained in a single day. The blink of an eye between the ebb of the darkening tide. Lying there with the pattern curled around me, I saw the inevitability, the necessity of presence born from absence, the constant unfolding.
I know it didn't mean to hurt any of them. I try and explain why Lizzie tried to leave with her child and why it was wrong to stop her. I try and explain that much of what it did was wrong. It shows me Stephen and Lizzie together. And I'm happy for them. Frank walks his fields with Mary. Wendy and Edward nest together in the orchards of their love. Jeremy lies at peace with his God at last. All of them are happy because they are together. I understand it better now. It is a collector of time. The butterflies. the pattern lean in and time slow to almost nothing. I saw the flame leap from Stephen's hand and the moment hang in the air forever. I watched his face and in the last second I almost believe he saw me. He wasn't frightened or angry. I remember his expression just like I remember it from the first time early that morning when he woke and still half sleeping said God I love you and I loved him as he entered the fire and I let him go knowing I wasn't ready to join him we have held time to ourselves here in this place held the light to the ground because we were afraid of the coming dark. But now we understand that to cling to the light is not living. I've spent my life watching the illumination from a million dead stars reaching for me without grasping this meaning. The light we cast transcends our death. The pattern made by our living creates a bridge across the dark. the observatory over the valley and consumes the world everything is light now everything has come to rest the world is scored by the traces we carved into it 
Our presence is everywhere. The bridge joining our stories. This world existed before we came to it, and it will continue without us. In the empty fields and houses, our traces radiate, and others will come to dance in the light we cast. We can slip away gently, unafraid, knowing that everything will continue. The end is coming now. I'm not afraid. We have each other. We lived apart from them. We understand now our failure to touch, to belong. But it doesn't matter anymore. Everybody is gone. We are born apart. Driftwood on the banks of an endless dark ocean, and we will be carried away by the swell soon enough. But in between, in the single day of living, that dancing in a strip of sunlight, we can find what we miss. The love that makes us whole. The imminence. Everybody found their other. This pattern is mine.